Okay, student, let's see what is there in this question. Two satellites are in circular orbit around the Earth. Both satellites have the same mass and satellite X is closer to the Earth than the satellite Y. Okay, let us first draw a simple diagram here. This is the planet. These are the two satellites that you're talking about. This is X and this is Y. And it is given that X is closer to Earth than Y. And they have the same mass. What is correct about the orbital time period for X and Y and the total energies? So this question is, although it is from 2022 November and in the previous syllabus, uh, Kepler's law was not uh, included. Um, and so at that time, you like the, those students have to find this thing, you know, like they have to uh, first find the orbital velocity of the satellite and then they will find the time period. There were a couple of things that they, they were supposed to do. But in the new syllabus, because Kepler's law is now included in your syllabus, so we directly we can use T square is directly proportional to R cube. Clearly, Y is going to have bigger time. So because time is directly proportional to R. So more is the radius, more is the time. No doubt about it. So Y is greater than X. So this first question about the orbital period can very easily be answered now in the new syllabus because now Kepler's law can be used. Okay, so this is done. Now we're moving to the total energies. So in total energies, in the case of satellite, we use the concept of bound state. We have discussed this thing so many times now. I believe you would be knowing this bound state. So in bound state, the total energy of the satellite is given by GMM divided by 2R. Now there will be students, those who say that I do not want to remember the formula. I will find the formula in the examination hall. That is really a bad strategy. I will say, please remember it. Time and again, you're going to be, you're going to see this question based on bound state on satellite. So why don't you just remember the formula? This is not given in the data booklet and I don't believe that they will be giving ever. So you can just remember it. Now, this total energy is always negative. Be very careful now. Now for the case of Y, the R value is bigger. So the denominator becomes bigger. It means GMM by R value is smaller. Okay. The magnitude of the total energy is going to become smaller, but because there is negative involved here, it means earlier the value here was negative 20. Let's say here the total energy will be given by negative 10. I'm just taking an example. So the magnitude has definitely reduced because R value is increasing. The magnitude is reducing, but because it is negative value. So we can say this is negative 20. This is negative 10. So this negative 10 is more than Y. Uh, x so x so y is having more energy than x so y is greater than x so d will be the correct answer in this question my dear students this question these questions which in which we talk about the energy of a satellite students usually become confused because there are so many formulation form, formulas for energies there's so many type of energies that we are working with and obviously students get confused that is why there is one thumb rule. If you're talking about a satellite, this is the formula that you're going to use. Game over. This is bound state that we have to use always. And this energy is always negative. That is why things are a bit dicey here. And practice makes you better. That is the only thing. Watch more videos, similar videos, and you would be learning things to deeper details. Otherwise, this is a very popular topic with IB. Okay, dear students, this is Professor Varun. Thanks for watching. All the best. Bye.